Hey guys, so we're going to quickly go over um, how to approach a timed writing. We are going to cover this more in class, but this is kind of to give you a little bit of help as you go into our timed writing um, on Thursday. Um, so the very first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at the prompt. Um, and when we deconstruct a prompt or break down the prompt, we want to look for three things. Uh, we want to look for B, which is background. So this is anything that can help us have context or create context um, for the situation that's happening. And with background, we're looking at um, time period, we're looking at key terms, we're looking at um, hmm, really anything else that can help us create an idea of what could be the purpose. We're also looking at the author. So this could be your author or your speaker. What do we know about him or her? Is it relevant to the passage itself? Um, and then we're gonna look at the task. And that is more than write an essay, so we're gonna look for the marker verb and we box those, um, we box the task. Uh, most of the time in a rhetorical analysis, which is what this is, there isn't um, a conjunction, like an and, like to do two things. Um, but if there is, we want to look for that. So let's just jump in and read this one. Um, in the following passage from The Great Influenza, an account of the 1918 flu epidemic, author John M. Barry writes about scientists and their research. Read the passage carefully. Then, in a well-written essay, analyze how Barry uses rhetorical strategies to characterize scientific research. All right, so we're gonna look and see, dig in there, what we can find with the background. So we know that this is the great influenza, so this is a book. Does it matter right now? Do we know anything about it? No. We know that this is what the book is about. So we look at like, what is an epidemic, right? So it involves a lot of people. We're looking that it's a problem, right? where uh, flu is an illness. So if we have a flu epidemic, then we're, especially in 1918, then it's not s as simple as a flu shot during that time, right? Um, so we're trying to solve it, okay? Author John M. Barry, so this is my speaker. Writes about scientists and their research. All right, so this is what the book is about. This goes back to the idea of it's not focusing so much on what happened in the flu epidemic, but it's about scientists and their research. So what do we know about scientists? Well, they question everything. They uh, look for solutions. They try to fix problems. What does research mean? So again, it's lots of questions. They um, don't, they fail a lot. Um, it costs money, right? What else can you write down there? So if you have anything, write some more, more stuff down. So then, so we've got the background and the author, so we've batted the prompt. Now we need to look at the task. Um, analyze, this is our marker verb how Barry uses rhetorical strategies to characterize scientific research. All right, so what we're always looking at is we're looking for our big purpose. And usually we don't find it in here. So when we look at rhetorical strategies, these are all gonna be choices. So we're not only looking for devices, we are looking for organization. We are looking for um, um, patterns of language. All right, and then characterize scientific research. So what does it mean to characterize? So characterize means like the, the if, if you think about characterize as in the way of the characterizing a person, right? So you're looking for components of, or you're trying to label. My handwriting's terrible. Um, you're trying to label. So at the very top, now that we've batted the prompt, at the very top of this, what I do is I write, I'm gonna try to grab another color pen. 
Um, I write what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for characterizing. So I'm going to write characterize. So as I annotate, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not necessarily looking for these devices, even though it says the how. I'm looking for how does he characterize it. So those are the, the notes that I want to make. Next thing we want to do before we jump in and read is we want to number our body paragraphs because when we number our body paragraphs, it helps us to organize our essay. So certainty is one, to be is two, a scientist is three, all real is four, a single step is uh, not five, sorry. Um, this should be in the wilderness, should be indented here. Uh, ultimately is six, and then not all is seven. All right, so a couple of things that we know when we um, plan our prompt or plan our essay is we do an introduction, two body paragraphs, and a conclusion. So we are looking for a shift before we even jump in um, to be able to divide the passage in half for one paragraph and one for another. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a um, couple of things. One, we're going to look at quickly, are there any um, transitional words that begin a body paragraph that can help us to guess a shift? Do the paragraphs go from short, short, short to long? Um, Sometimes there is usually a break, whenever they break the passage into two columns, there's a break somewhere close to here, or a shift somewhere close to here. Um, so if I'm guessing uh, certainty to be scientist, all real, single step in the wilderness. So this is off a cliff and then this is into the wilderness. So I'm gonna guess a shift here. So we are guessing a shift there. So what that does, sorry, what that does is that helps us look for it as we read. All right, all right, so that's as we read, that's how we attack it. Now let's talk about planning. I'm gonna flip over to the back and plan. So when we plan, we always do a T-chart, and you can do this at the bottom of your page if you want. So the T-chart is, this is our first body paragraph, and then this is body paragraph number two. Now what we want to look at is we want to look at what paragraphs does body paragraph one cover. So let's say we do keep it right here. So we're going to say body paragraph number one covers paragraphs one through four. Body paragraph number two covers paragraphs five through seven. Okay, so now in there, what we want to do is we want to do two chunks. So we're going to divide that in half two. So what a chunk is, this is chunk one, and this is chunk two. So what a chunk is, is a chunk is a piece of embedded text, and then, and justification of how your evidence proves your assertion. We wanna try to choose different patterns of language in here. So chunk one, very easily, if we divide this in half, Chunk one, we're gonna find a piece of evidence from somewhere between paragraphs one and two. Chunk two, we're gonna look for something between paragraphs three and four. We do that because now what you've done is you've analyzed that whole first half of the passage for me, the reader. All right, and then same thing over here on this side, we're probably gonna do, let's say five and six, and then this last paragraph comes, or this last chunk comes from paragraph seven. Now, what you're asking is, okay, I haven't done an assertion or thesis statements. So, we do this. So these are your assertions. We call them assertions instead of topic sentences for your first sentence of your body paragraph because your assertions answer the question how or why is your purpose or your abstract idea true? And we'll talk about that, okay? So a lot of times what we do is if we can't figure out this is going to be your thesis up here, if we can't figure out the big idea, and it has to be more than what is said in the prompt, um, if we can't figure out the big idea, then we start from the bottom and work our way up. So we look at what evidence we like, and then we say, okay, what does that prove? What big idea? This assertion cannot be a fact. means you cannot go to the text and point it out. 
point out where that answer is. An assertion um, is your opinion that you prove true through evidence. All right, so what I would do is I would read, plan, look at what I like the most as evidence and use those in my chunks and then say, what can I prove? And then you work on your assertions. The other way is you can work from the top down. So your thesis statement has two parts. It has a concrete plus abstract. Okay, your concrete is what you could put your finger on in the prompt. So this one would be characterized as scientific research. So Barry characterizes scientific research. Okay, that's our concrete. Then our abstract, we say in order to, gets us to our abstract. What's the big idea? So then you identify a big idea. Your abstract is hopefully one, two, maybe three words. It is clear, concise, and to the point. Your abstract goes there. All right, then it's kind of like math. You go back and check. So you can say whatever your assertion is, so if this one, uh, Barry characterizes scientific research in order to prove that scientists are true heroes. So let's say for this one, we say that they're true heroes. Then for our assertion, we say, how or why does Barry believe they're heroes? That answer is gonna be your assertion. And then we say, how or why in the second half of the passage does Barry believe scientists are heroes, okay? So that's a quick layout of what we're looking for. Remember your justification is not summary. It's not telling me what the quote means. It's telling me how these words prove this idea. Not what they mean, but how does the language do it? All right, that's all I got. That will get you through your planning. Remember in 40 minutes, you should be able to read, annotate, and plan. So let's do a quick breakdown. So in 40 minutes, this is your time breakdown, okay? You should do 10 minutes of your 40 minutes to read, annotate, and plan. All right, 10 minutes. I know it seems like a lot, but it's gonna take you that long to get through if any of my pens are working. Um, all right, this is gonna be pencil, so it may be a little shiny. Okay, so 10 minutes to read, annotate, plan five minute for your intro, and it's three sentences. Historical context or context of the passage, and then about the author, speaker, audience, and then you have your thesis, that's it. And then you have 10 minutes for body paragraph one, 10 minutes for body paragraph two, five minutes for your conclusion. So there is your 40 minutes. So when you work through the passage, keep your time that way. All right, that's all I got. Do your best, you'll be fine, it's fine.